Hey guys, today I'm going to teach you about the administration and purpose of the image to the beast. This is part three of this series. Okay guys, we've been discussing Revelation chapter 13 verse 15, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many would not worship, the image of the beast should be killed. And this is a very important passage of scripture where we see the corporeal appearing of the image to the beast and its uh, administration and purpose uh, uh, to speak and cause all flesh that would not will not worship it to or should be put to death. So it's an amazing passage of scripture and it can only be understood really in the context of the the passage and I personally believe the passage is the the appearing of the second incarnation of the beast holistically that appears in Revelation chapter 13 verse 11 through 18. So I've also I broke it down um, we've been discussing the past two lessons I broke this this verse verse 15 down into seven different uh seven different uh, portions where that I believe gives us the main gist of what the Holy Spirit is trying to convey to us um, in this verse of scripture. And it's a voluminous, it's a humongous amount of information, especially if you are versed in theology. There's, I mean, it can be paralleled with a, a lot of other passages in the Bible to get further meaning on what's taking place here in just this one verse of Scripture. So let's go ahead and let's delve a little bit deeper into Revelation thirteen fifteen. Um, this is uh, uh, and the verse states, and he had power, the very first line, and he had power. And that word for power is the Greek word didomi. It means to be to bestow, bring forth, receive, make, minister, number, offer, smite, smite, or strike with the hand. And he had power to give life. And that word for life there is the Greek word pneuma. And it means a current of air, breath, by analogy, a spirit, a rational human soul, mental disposition, superhuman, an angel, or demon. Translation, ghost, life, spirit, or mind. So, and he had power to give life unto the image, and that word for image there is the Greek word ikon, and it means likeness, statue, profile, representation, resemblance. So, he, he had, and he had power to give life unto the image, which is the Greek ikon. Okay, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. That word for beast there is the Greek word therion, T-H-E-R-E-I-O-N. It's descriptive. It means a dangerous animal. Translation, a venomous wild beast. So, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. Greek therion, a dangerous animal or a venomous wild beast. That the image of the of the beast should both speak and that word for speak there is the greek word laliho it means to talk utter words preach speak preach speak say talk tell utter and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many would not worship and that word for worship is the greek word proskuneo it's descriptive it means to kiss like a dog licking his master's hand to fawn to prostrate oneself in homage reverence, adore, translation to worship. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many would not worship, the image of the beast should be killed. And that word for kill there is the Greek word apoktieno, and it means to put to death, to kill, to slay. So by looking at these seven different Greek words that appear here, and uh, this passage, this verse of Scripture, Revelation thirteen fifteen, we start to get a, a more detailed and accurate uh, description of what's taking place here in this verse. And in my thinking, it is first and foremost what we're seeing is the corporal appearing of the image to the beast. We're seeing as it has been summoned, commissioned, and anointed by the beast in verse 13 and 14 of Revelation 13 also. So, and he had power to give life unto the image 
of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So the anointing that the image receives from the beast appears in verse 13 as wonders. This, the, the, the verse states, and he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. So here we see, we see the beast actually in purpose anointing the image. So this appears and the anointing of the image for the beast appears in verse 13 as wonders, which is the Greek word semeon, and again as miracles, the Greek word also semeon, in verse 14. And he had power, excuse me, and he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and verse 14 of Revelation 13, and deceiveth them by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. So here we see, we see the, the, the beast summoning the image and anointing the image with gr the Greek semeon with this, this uh, uh, anointing to perform wonders and, and miracles. Okay, so we see this also in to get a clear idea of what's taking place on how the beast is anointing the image. We can look at Revelation 16, 14. For they are spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. So we see this again here. We see the source of these miracles that is a, that is in in purpose the the beast is is summoning the image with in verse 13 and 14 of revelation 13 we see the the essence of what's taking place here in revelation 16 14 we see the source of these miracles and wonders as the spirits of devils working miracles the greek semeon which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. So here we have, we have the source, we have the, the excuse me, not the sword, the essence of the anointing and that's being translated from the beast to the image as, as it is uh, given its power to perform wonders and miracles in the sight of the beast and these wonders and miracles are that word for miracles that appears in Revelation 16, 14 also is the Greek word semeon. And I believe that what the Holy Spirit is trying to convey to us here is the, the anointing that's being trans, transferred as, it, as the beast is summoning its image in purpose in Revelation 13, 13 and 14. Uh, this this transfer occurs, and then we have the corporal appearing of the image of the beast in Revelation chapter 13, verse 15, where the beast is given power to give life unto the image, and the image that the image should both speak and cause that as many would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So, it becomes absolutely crystal clear um, um, the, the anointing that wherewith the image has been anointed with, and it's with the spirit of devils, and it's given this spirit of devils specifically so it can perform miracles within not only the kings of the world, but within the, the population at large. Um, and anoint and it's this miraculous power i mean first it occurs with the beast we see first that the beast uh the beast is performing great wonders first and foremost and then immediately in verse 13 and he and he and he doeth wonders excuse me and he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men first 
the beast appears here in verse 13, and he's doing wonders. He's he's has this anointing, and it's clear then in Revelation 13, 15, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. It's clear what he's doing here in verse 14 in purpose is he's trans he's transferring this anointing of the this spirit of devils and the spirit of antichrist from himself the beast unto the image in purpose in vo verse 14 and then we see the corporeal appearing of the image uh, with the anointing of the spirit of antichrist and the spirit of devils to go out specifically revelation 16:14 and anoint the entire the entire world with the anointing wherewith it is sealed with the seal of death and the residence of death within its own soul. So, as we as we look at these passages of Scripture, it becomes, and we meditate on them, it becomes clearer and clearer what the Holy Spirit is conveying to us and what is happening here um, in God's foreknowledge and um, prophetic views. God's revealing to us in prophecy um, what will take place at the end of our age, and that is actually, I personally believe, is taking place now, as everybody's painfully aware of. So, verse 13, again, the beast calls fire down from heaven, anointing the ends of all of the earth, of all the earth. In verse 13, it's actually, the beast is actually calling fire down from heaven and anointing the ends of all the earth that are without the spirit of grace, with the spirit of antichrist at his appearing. Revelation 13, 18. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath, hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 603 scored six. And there's no two, two clear places of Scripture that are, that are more clear in my thinking for the appearing of Antichrist in our world than Revelation chapter 13, verse 13, and verse 18. Okay? However, in verse 13... And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Prior to his appearing, which verse 13 appears, it appears to me to be the appearing of Antichrist, the appearing of beast, of the beast. But as does verse 18 also. But, however, prior to, the, to his appearing, the beast summons, commissions, and anoints the image with fire. Okay? The Greek... P poor, P-Y-R, or pyre, in verse 13, is, is the verse 13. Here we, in purpose, this is also the beast appearing in purpose as it pours out this, this excuse me. However, prior to his appearing, the beast summons, commissions, and anoints the image with fire, the Greek P-Y-R, pyre, poor, to pour out the spirit of Antichrist upon the kings of the earth and the whole world, Revelation 16, 14, to fulfill its, the, the image's administration and purpose. So it's, it's got, it's got two, it's ultimately, it is the appearing of Antichrist, but it is also the appearing of Antichrist before it appears to the populations of the world. It's the appearing of Antichrist as it is summoning in purpose, it summons, it's speaking. The Bible states it's speaking. It's actually, um, um, in verse 14, saying, the last line of verse 14 says, the beast is saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast. So actually, when you look at verse 13 and, thir 13 and 14, when it's calling fire down from heaven, and it's, it, but it's doing so, and it's saying for it's it's summoning the the it's saying to the entire world, and summoning for the image to the beast to appear. It can also be uh, verse thirteen can also be, in my thinking, applicable to before Antichrist actually appears to all flesh. It's actually, he's here. It means this, what this, I translate, what it means to me and appears to me to, to convey is that the Antichrist is here. He's here in the flesh. He's maturating as a natural man. 
and he's actually speaking. He's speaking, and when he's doing so, he's calling fire down from heaven, and he's summoning for the image of the beast to appear in our world. And this is what's taking place in Revelation 13, 13, and 14. And as he, as he does this, then we see the corporal appearing of the image of the beast in verse 15. Okay? But it's absolutely crystal clear, Revelation 13, 13, also in the fulfillment of the entirety of this verse, it is the appearing of Antichrist in our world, calling fire down from heaven and anointing the ends of the earth, all those that were not under the administration, the twofold administration of the image of the beast, anointing all those that do not have the spirit of grace with the spirit of Antichrist, so they are not allowed to ascend and to meet Jesus in the air at his second advent, okay? So uh, it's an amazing passage of scripture. And so Revelation 13, 13 has, has a double meaning to me. It, it appears that it is, it is the appearing of Antichrist as the, the Antichrist has not yet appeared to all flesh as it is speaking, actually speaking, and it's summoning the image to appear and it's anointing the image to the to appear. It's commissioning the, the image to deceive the entire world. And it's anointing the image with the spirit of Antichrist to perform the same anoint miracles with which it is performing as it summons its children into satanic occupation. So it's an amazing passage of scripture. And, uh, uh, it, it's and it's also uh, it's so it's 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 antichrist appearing in our world in corporeal form before um, as it's summoning the image to the beast and then in totality in conclusion when it actually appears to make certain that all flesh without the spirit of grace has the seal of Satan resident within their heart. So it has a double meaning to me, Revelation 13, 13. And this is, this is, understanding this is key to understanding what's taking place in verse 14 and verse 15. Okay, so let's keep going. Revelation 13, uh, excuse me. Um, so we see this in Revelation 13, 15, where the beast had power to give life unto the image. The word for life there, the Greek pneuma, meaning spirit, mental disposition, an angel or demon. And that's what it's doing. That's what it's doing. It's actually, it's appeared. I believe Revelation 13, 13 is the appearing in corporeal form of Antichrist in our world. And it's as, but it's, it's verse 14 as it's calling fire down from heaven in its first sense in verse 14, it actually has not appeared to the world yet. It's summoning the image to bring forth uh, those that will receive it first and foremost and be closest to it in, in spiritual proximity that love death and that have the residence of death and its highest operational capacity within their souls and will serve Satan or Antichrist and it's in, in his highest operational capacity, John chapter 8, verse 44. You are your father, devil, unless your father you do. He's a murderer from the beginning, a bow not a truth, because there's no truth in him. He speaketh of the lie, he speaketh of his own, for he's the lie and their father of it. So it's it's those. He's summoning, he's here in the flesh. And in Revelation 13, 13, he has appeared in the flesh and he's speaking. He's saying. The Greek, it's the Greek as he's speaking, it's the Greek Lego. And he's saying. It means a, a systematic uh uh, discourse, and he's speaking, and as he's doing, he's summoning, um, but it may not be necessarily, uh, it's not um, as in the fullness of his power, okay? It's not in the fullness of actually, okay, the beast is here, he's now appeared, he's taken control of the world as a one world ruler, and he's fin He's a performing the final anointing to anoint all flesh. He's, he's unknown Nobody knows who he is. And he may be orating publicly, but nobody knows who he is. And as he's orating, he's summoning the image to appear to perform the administration, to speak and to cause all those that will not worship 
Antichrist, or worship image, and the spirit of Antichrist that resides within the image to be killed. Okay, so... Revelation 13, 15, we see the administration and purpose of the image is to both speak and cause that as many would not worship the, the image should be killed. Revelation 13, 11 through 18, twice in this passage, we see the beast speaking. And at one time, we are, are in, at one time, we are informed the image is speaking, okay? And this is occurring in verses 11 14 and 15. Twice we're told the beast is speaking, and once we're told the image is speaking, and uh, respectively. So that's once and twice, um, 11, 14, and 15. Twice we're told the beast is speaking, and once we're told the image is speaking. So the beast is speaking in Revelation chapter 13, 11. Okay, the word says, And I beheld another beast coming out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, but he spake as a dragon. And it appears to me that the beast that appears, remember the passage is the second incarnation of the beast is Revelation 13, 11 through 18. And that the only place the image of the beast appears as summoned by the beast that I'm aware of is in Revelation 13, 11 through 18. The first incarnation of the beast was a system that passed away that was that was prevalent during the Middle Ages and Dark Ages of the history of our world. It killed millions of people and thousands of Christians horribly, and it persecuted people that, that opposed its power, and it was a terrible time. But what's being indicated in the passage of Revelation 13, 11 through 18, where we see the second incarnation of the beast, is the appearing of the, the image of the beast in the administration of the spirit of Antichrist to cause all flesh to worship death's residence in the temple of God, and a fact, the administration of the image of the beast is absolutely declared to be an exact facsimile of what take, took place in the Middle Ages. And this is declared here in Revelation 13, 12. After, the first, after we see the, the, the second beast appear in verse 11, and I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Verse 12 says, and he exercises all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and the image to dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. So this is, and he exercises all the power of the first beast before him. So this, the scripture, the Holy Spirit, Jesus is making absolutely crystal clear to us that this power has the same purpose and and goals that that the first beast had that that was act, that actually faded away. Its power faded away, and men started coming out of an age of darkness and. And entering into enlightenment, enlightenment, the industrial revolution, and and you know, uh, so we had several ages take place um, um, after you know the 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 Protestant Reformation and uh, in the early 1800s, and so um, people started coming out of of um, um, that decline um, of society of intellect, um, you know. Uh, spiritually and psychologically, emotionally and intellectually, people were during the Middle Ages and the Dark Ages, the intellect was stifled. You know, the, we know this. It, men's creative creativity was was stifled and the whole world was just stuck in this darkness, right? And it, I personally believe it was caused by the first incarnation of the beast that subjugated all people in the abode of a lie. And so, um, but anyway, let's keep going. Um, so verse 11, the beast is speaking in Revelation first, the second incarnation of the beast is speaking and the second incarnation, uh, excuse me, the second beast is speaking in Revelation chapter 13, verse 11, which is the second incarnation of the beast, which is what is applicable to us today. So and this is the first instance of him speaking. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb. And he spake as a dragon. And so this appears to me at the beast as it appears here, and, and which is very different to the beast that appears to me, what the beast is doing in Revelation 13, 13, and 14. It appears to me to be an, agglom an agglomerated body of the image that is speaking in verse 15. 
Okay. Um, verse 11, it says the beast spake. And in verse 15, we see the image is given power by the beast to speak. And these two, these two words for spake and speak are the same word. It's the Greek word laliho. Okay. And so I believe And it means to talk, to utter words, preach, speak, say, tell, utter. So it appears to me that what we're seeing here in the first incarnation of the beast, and I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, but he spake as a dragon. Okay? So this appears to me that this is actually... This is the agglomerated form of the image of the beast as the image of the beast has is has organized and is operating as one mind, one voice, and one singular vision with the spirit of Antichrist, and it has begun its oratory portion of its administration, maintaining its image as a kind and benevolent, friendly messenger while it is speaking with the tongue of a dragon. Okay? That's what this appears to me. It's This appears to me a totally different manifestation of the beast in Revelation chapter 13, verse 11, than what's occurring in Revelation chapter 13, verse 13 and 14, where in verse 13, we see the corporeal appearing of the image of, excuse me, of Antichrist. We see Antichrist summoning by speaking the uh, and and in purpose summoning the image of the beast and of course the image of the beast appearing in corporal form in, in Revelation thirteen fifteen. So, what appears that's taking place here that the beast that's that is appearing here in Revelation chapter thirteen verse eleven is actually the 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 agglomeration of those that are first summoned and anointed and sealed with the spirit of Antichrist that have the the seal of Satan in predestination that are actually appearing in the power of the beast as vast numbers that are speaking as a dragon, but they look to the population like a little lamb. Okay, so this appears to me to describe the very administration of the image to the beast as before the image to the beast has place to force all flesh to worship it, not the beast, it. Revelation 13, 15, on pain of death. It's, it appears to me to be the first manifestation of the administration of the image of the beast as the image of the beast has received the 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 message from antichrist and it is and the spirit of antichrist is maturating in the heart of the image to the beast in parallel to the to the spirit of antichrist maturating in the body of antichrist in our world ezekiel chapter 7 verse 5 through 6 and 10 and the image to the beast is actually appearing on earth and it's orating to the populations of the world. And this is really bad news if you know what, if you've memorized Revelation 16, 14. For these are spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth, unto the whole world, to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. So what we're seeing here appears to me what we're seeing here in Revelation chapter 13, verse 11, is actually the oration of the the multiple the multiplicity of voices as one mind, one voice, and one singular vision of the, the agglomeration of the image to the beast speaking in the power of the beast as the seal of Satan and the spirit of Antichrist resides within the souls of all those that have now received and are maturating 51%. All it takes is 51%. That's all it took was for King Nebuchadnezzar to, to be declared by Holy Father God, un unworthy of life anymore, and to have the mark of the beast in ancient Babylon. 
okay? And that's all it takes by God's design and judgment's Holy Father God. They're done. They're toast. Their souls are dead, okay? The only thing they're operating on, they don't break bread. They don't abide in love. They abide in death. And they'll kill everything that opposes their power, men, women, children, babies, the unborn, to obtain their administration in the sight of the beast in the fullness of its numbers and operational capacity. And it appears to me what's taking place here in Revelation chapter 13, verse 11, is the administration of the image to the beast as it is attempting to fulfill its speaking with the tongue of a dra with it's speaking as a dragon, but it's attempting to maintain its its persona as a kindly and benevolent entity. And I believe the reason for this is absolutely crystal clear. Because this is exactly the 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 stunning and and uh just uh perplexing astonishment that's coming upon the entire world as leaders, a particular leader in our in our country, started speaking with the tongue of a dragon recently. Okay, and so that's got to me. This is a, this is this is you know Revelation thirteen eleven is appears to me to be the beginning stages of the the operational capacity as the image to the beast. As one mind, one voice, and one singular vision, Revelation seventeen seventeen, with the spirit of as anointed with the spirit of Antichrist and the seal of Satan, as it appeared in corporeal form in Revelation thirteen fifteen, Revelation chapter seventeen verse seventeen, for God hath put in their hearts to fulfill His will and to agree and to give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God should be fulfilled. Revelation thirteen eleven appears to me to be the, to be the administration of the image of the beast speaking as a dragon in the power of Antichrist to the entire world and attempting to lead the entire world as it solicits the worship of death in the constitution of man and attempts to incorporate the worship of death into the constitution of all flesh. And that that we know is the that we we know that that the 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 worship of death is sealed within the image of the beast. That's why it appears in corporeal form in Revelation 13, 15. Okay, that once it appears in corporeal form in Revelation 13, 15, it is, that's, and I, we discussed this yesterday. That's why it's the image of the beast as, per, where, as um, um, in Revelation 13, 15, whereas in Revelation 13, 14, when it's being summoned by the beast in Revelation 13, 13, and 14, it is, it is saying to them that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword but, but did live. But when the image of the beast appears in corporeal form in Revelation 13, 15, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. It's no longer being summoned in a proactive manner. It's received it. It has received it, and he had power to give. He had power, and in the power of the beast has been made manifest. The Greek didymo, didymi, to, bo, to, to bestow, bring forth, receive, make, minister. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, and that power has been fulfilled once the beast appears in corporeal form in Revelation chapter thirteen, verse fifteen, to number, offer, strike, smite, and to strike with the hand like being slapped with a hand. And that's exactly what their oratory ministry and its power is doing to the populations of the world as the populations of the world now are all scratching their heads and saying, oh my goodness, what we once thought was, was the most, the, the greatest and benevolent and the, the standard of righteousness for the entire world is now speaking with the tongue of a dragon. And I believe that that's, that's the, that's the whole reason because that's the very first thing that the world's going to notice is, is, is that there has been a really serious attitude adjustment and people are speaking the um, uh, forces 
the powers that be are starting to speak with the tongue of a dragon while they're attempting to maintain an outward appearance of benevolence and kindness so the populations will continue to trust them and to follow them and allow them to lead them into a pit of destruction. Matthew chapter 15, verse 13 and 14. So, which states, If every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up, let them alone, they be blind leaders of the blind, and the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the pit. Okay, and we know that pit appears in Revelation chapter 9, verse 11. And they and they had an angel over them, and they excuse, and they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. And here we have we have the appearing again of Antichrist as it is summoning all flesh into destruction. So, uh, guys, Revelation. So that's up. I mean, Revelation thirteen eleven. It appears to me that it's it's it's. I mean. This, the passage, we do see the appearing of the beast, but it's not the, it's the appearing of the beast power. It's the appearing of this power as the image to the beast has appeared in corporeal form and is attempting to draw all flesh and incorporate the worship of death in the temple of God, both within civil and ecclesiastical powers and translate this into laws in, in de democratic societies, so the image of the beast can fulfill its administration to speak and to cause that as many would not worship, the image should be killed. Okay, so um, let me read this again. Verse, so the image in verse, da, 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 the beast is speaking in Revelation 13, 11, appears to me to be an agglomerated body of the image that speaks in verse 15. Verse 11, spake, and verse 15 speak these are both the greek laliho okay and as the image is operating as one mind one voice and one singular vision with the spirit of antichrist it has begun its oratory portion of its administration maintaining its image as a kind of benevolent friendly messenger while it is speaking with the tongue of a dragon R R romans three thirteen. their throat is an open sepulcher with their tongues they have used deceit the poison of ass is under their lips. And we know that Romans 3.13 gives us the full spiritual transformation of the spirit of Antichrist from the image to the beast to the creature. And that's the thing. The beast is a singular unit. The image to the beast is fast numbers of the population. And the reason for the beast summoning its image, first and foremost, to be those that are closest in spiritual proximity to the beast or the appearing of Antichrist is to force all flesh to receive of the spirit of Antichrist and the mark of the beast on pain of death as it labors to satiate its own illicit desires in its own satanic captivity as the spirit of Antichrist resides within its soul. And that transfer, the transfer in this administration of the image is explicated in Romans 3.13. Their throat is an open sepulcher. It's an invitation to serve hell and death. With their tongues they have used deceit. Every single thing, every single, every single, uh, uh, every single, I don't want to put this, every single, um, with the image of the beast, they're being anointed with the spirit of Antichrist. Because everything it's telling you is a lie. Everything it's telling you is a lie. It has everything that it's telling, the administration of the image of the beast in totality is founded upon deceit. Everything is a lie. Everything is a lie until it can obtain power to kill human beings as it is in love with Satan and the worship of death until it can obtain power to control the population we know sexually and monetarily as the names of blasphemy appear in Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6. We know the image of the beast, everything's a lie. All the people that it's telling that it's going to take care of and it's going to get them raises, you're never going to see them again. You won't see any more of these people than you see rock stars, movie stars, or sports stars because they're going to be cultivating in that glory, but in the glory of satanic power, they will be cultivating the glory. They will be cap captivating the glory of the world on pain of death, and they will kill any human being that will not serve them sexually and monetarily. And that's 
the, the corporal appearing of the image of the beast in Revelation 13, 15. But the administration, the transfer of the spirit of Antichrist appears in Romans 3, 13, where, and this explicates the complete spiritual transfer of satanic captivity from the image of the beast to the creature. Their throat is no sepulture. First, it starts out as, as an invitation. And this is what we see in Revelation 13, 11. We see the invitation because it cannot perform. It cannot kill people to control people sexually and monetarily yet. So it's actually, it's coming as an invitation and it's telling people it's going to take care of them and it's going to get them more money. And this is exactly the, the captivity that resides it's speaking out its own captivity and its ministry as it goes out and it tells the world that it's going to it's going to perform and provide this captivity that resides within itself for sexual and monetary advancement. It's going to provide that for the world when in truth it has no intention whatsoever to provide anybody anything. It's only going to take. That's all it's going to do. And it's going to take your soul. It's a thief that's coming to take. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. John chapter 10, verse 10. Okay? The throat is an open sepulcher. It's an invitation to serve hell and death. With their tongues they have used deceit. The very foundation of every fellowship and communion that people are taking with organized crime as the image of the beast is laboring today, planting seeds of death, and, and cultivating the seeds of death by both passively and directly as it pours out the spirit of Antichrist, soliciting organized crime in our world, manifested by the seal of Satan in Revelation 13, 15 through 17 also, as it, as it communes and fellowships with people, it's deceiving them, and everything it's telling you is founded upon a lie, and it's doing nothing but transferring the spirit of Antichrist from itself to you and attempting to render you in service unto it until it can have place to kill you, to take, and then it no longer needs, to, needs you to serve. That's the thing. There'll come a time it doesn't need you to serve anymore. When the seal of Satan comes to fruition, it doesn't need you anymore. It can disappear. It can disappear like a rock star, movie star, or sports star. And it, you'll serve it in that fashion. And that w that's what it wants you to do because it'll kill you if you don't serve it sexually and monetarily. Okay? And that's what that thing, that's what it is it's a child of Satan, and that's what it is trying to do. It's trying to convince the entire world that it's a kind and benevolent entity until it can incorporate in fullness the worship of death into all souls that will receive it and manifest this within the constitution of men's souls. Okay? And so everything that it administrates in organized crime and in this communion and fellowship in the spirit of Antichrist is based on a lie, and it is the administration of deceit. That's, that's Satan. That is designed. These are the words of Satan. When you are talking face-to-face -face with the image to the beast, you are talking directly to Satan. You're talking to Satan's amb 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 ambassador. You're talking to Satan, who is trying to cultivate everybody with his mark to escape the judgments of Holy Father God. And finally, the poison of ass is under their lips. The, the transfer is received just as it was by the image of the beast, and you appear in corporeal form, and you are now subject unto the image of the beast. If you are not in that civil administration that appears in Revelation 13, 15, and you don't have that power to put people to death that will not serve you sexually and monetarily, you're not in, you're not in that high spiritual manifestation, but you may, you're, if you serve it, You'll have the mark of the beast. If you're communion and fellowshipping with it, you're receiving the mark of the beast. Revelation 14, 9 and 10. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, the same shall drink of the wine of wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. Okay? So, So it looks to me that that Revelation thirteen eleven is actually the the beginning, the incipient stages of the the orations of the image of the beast as the image of the beast uh, appears in the beast's power, and it's it is consolidated and and is it now has one purpose to force all flesh to worship the image on pain of death in a sexual and monetary capacity. 
um, um, this is the administration that is appearing and is appearing and the world, the whole world's going to be astonished. The Bible, there's <laughs> the, the whole world is saying what's going on because all of a sudden they don't know that they just saw the appearing, the, the appearing of the second beast in our world. And it just happened. It just happened. It just happened on January 20th of that would be 2016. It happened on January 20th of 2016 and it lasted and thank God God took it into captivity because it was planning you know it was planning it we know these people will they'll kill you know I mean they're pouring out the spirit of antichrist and they're laboring for power. They're laboring for level legislative and civil and ecclesiastical. If they're laboring for civil power to conceal their illicit works and to be able to kill any human being that will bring to light to the populations the, the kingdom of darkness and the presence of Antichrist in our world. And that's what their job is. Their job is to conceal the Antichrist and to protect him until it's time for him to appear and to anoint all his children, calling fire down from heaven. And he doeth great wonders, so he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. That's what they're doing. They're, they're protecting him, and they are, they are incorporating the worship of death through the spirit of Antichrist in the temple of God, which... There's going to have to be guns everywhere. <laughs> we know. I, know. I personally believe that any anybody in false apostate Christianity that makes union and communion with, as the seal of Satan appears in Revelation 13, 15 through 17, with the image of the beast, I personally believe they're going to need guns. They'll need armed guards at every service. If if they may, if they have the seal of Satan, that's the gateway to hell. That's the very gateway to hell. And that's what they're that's what they're there. That's what the image of the beast is there for. That's what he's there for. He's to protect the Antichrist so he can appear in the flesh and to be, and be risen up as the king of all those that will receive him. And there's not going to be an election. He's just going to appear. And he's going to have de facto world power in every corner of the world of those in their portion and measure that receive him in his power. And the manifestation of receiving him is the seal of Satan that appears in Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 through 17. Okay, where we have the corporal appearing of, of the image of the beast that appears in civil power to cause all flesh that will not worship the image in sexual and monetary service on pain of death. And then we have an ecclesiastical power appearing that forces everyone to receive the mark of the beast. The spiritual manifestation is manifest in full by the ecclesiasticals appearing and of, of the, the, the ecclesiastical portion of the mark in Revelation 13, 16, and 7, 17 that is caused by the image. of It is directly administrated and caused by the image of the beast. Revelation 13, 15, Revelation 13, 16, and 17. And he, the image of the beast, causeth all, both small and great, rich and, pa rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Okay? And so this is what's taking place here in Revelation chapter 13, verse 11 through 18. And I believe that the world just witnessed the appearing of the second beast power in corporeal form, as the image of the beast has agglomerated in purpose and has begun orating in our world, pouring out the spirit of Antichrist upon the kings of the earth and the populations of the world. Revelation 16, 14. For they are spirits of devils, working miracles, which go forth unto, unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the great day of God Almighty. Okay? Well, I believe we just witnessed it. It started on January 20th, 2016. And it, hey, who's the biggest fool? The fool or the fool who follows him? And that's exactly what Jesus states about the people that are following this movement in Matthew chapter 15, verse 13 and 14. 
He's stating people that, he says, my sheep hear my voice, they know me, and they follow me. But the exact opposite is true with Antichrist. That's what Antichrist is. He's opposite Christ. He's in direct opposition to the fruits of life, Galatians 5, 22 and 23. And this is exactly what Jesus is stating in Matthew chapter 15, verse 13 and 14. Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. At the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. And this is exactly why the churches are not called to get involved in politics. Give people the gospel of Jesus Christ and let God bring to fruition his children because you can't force it. Forcing people in, with politics is doing nothing but forcing people out of the presence of God by enforcing the mark of the beast in our world. That's what it does, and that's what it's designed to do. It's designed to do under the auspices and the administration and purpose of the image of the beast as it appears in corporal form in Revelation chapter 13, 15. So, Uh, verse 13 and 14, we see the beast or Antichrist in verse 14. We're seeing, in verse 14, we're seeing it's in, we're seeing, we're seeing the purpose, we're seeing the appearing of, of Antichrist in verse 13. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. We're seeing the, the, the beast appear in corporeal, the, excuse me, the beast or Antichrist appear in corporeal form, but first we're seeing uh, him appear in corporeal form as he's hidden from the populations in purpose. We're seeing him appear in purpose, and then in, immediately in verse 14, uh, um, and then in the fullness of what takes place in 13, we see him appear actually in corporeal form to the entire, when well, this is done though, this, the seven last plagues have, have fallen on everybody, and the world's done. When he's when he appears and he calls fire down from heaven, it's over. It's we're, this planet's done. All the cities are broken down at the presence of the Lord. Uh, this world is done, and everybody that's got the mark of the beast is is just they are having the worst day that that you could ever possibly imagine. I mean, look what's happening now with people that whose houses are desolate. Okay, and so they're having the worst day that they could possibly imagine. So, but, uh, in verse 14, when the beast is summoning in purpose the image, we're seeing its internal mechanisms by which it anoints all flesh with the spirit of Antichrist. And then, of, of course, in verse 18, we're seeing its appearance in corporeal form to all flesh that receive his presence. And I wrote here Job chapter... So we see in two places, in verse 13 and verse 18, we're seeing the, the, the literal presence of the appearing of Antichrist. That's what it appears to me. And then, of course, like I'm stating, we're seeing it in two manifestations in verse 13. We're seeing it in purpose before he actually we're, he appears to all flesh, and then we're seeing his actual appearance to all flesh, where he, uh, he, he anoints all flesh with fire. Job chapter 12, verse 12. Job chapter 12, verse 24, 25, 17, 19, 16, 22. He taketh away the heart of the chief of the people of the earth and causeth them to wander in a wilderness where there is no way. They grope in the dark without light, and he maketh them to stagger like a drunken man. He leadeth counselors away spoiled and maketh the judges fools. He leadeth princes, the way, princes away spoiled and overthroweth the mighty. With him, with him is strength and wisdom. The deceived and the deceiver are his. This appears to me to be a direct reference to the beast and his image. He discovereth deep things out of darkness and bringeth out to light the shadow of death. This appears to me to be another direct reference to the appearing of Antichrist just in the final few seconds before the second advent of Jesus Christ. And of course, at the first part of this passage, uh, Job chapter 12, and Job answered and said, No doubt, but ye are the people, and wisdom shall die with you. But I have understanding as well as you. I am not inferior to you, yet 
Yea, who knoweth not such these things as these? I am as one mocked of his neighbor who calleth upon God, and he answereth him, The just upright man is laughed to scorn. He that is ready to slip with his feet is as a lamp despised in the thought of him that is at ease. The tabernacle of robbers prosper, and they that provoke God are secure, into whose hand God bringeth abundantly. But ask now the beast, and they shall teach thee, and the fowls of the air, and they shall teach thee. Or speak to the earth, and it shall teach thee, and the fishes of the sea shall declare unto thee. Who knoweth not in all these things that the hand of the Lord hath wrought this. Jeffrey Leone, if you're edified by this program, please hit the like button, subscribe to this channel to receive notifications of future installments. And remember, you come to the throne room of God today and receive your healing directly if you're abiding in mercy and grace as manifested by Matthew chapter 13, verse 10 through 15. Thank you.